Hello, everybody. This is John Schneider, and welcome to Jersey Bay Shore Country. Today's episode, Drones and Quadcopters. You know, I've been flying a quadcopter now for about a year. This is Highlands, New Jersey. I recently shot this footage, and everybody asks me about these things, so I thought I'd do a program. Okay, so that's me. That's me flying this. How'd I do? Uh, you did okay with it. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> a very easy quad uh, to fly, and, and you exemplify how, how well it flies. It, it is amazing. I, I remember when uh, cell phones first came out, and you'd see somebody on a cell phone for the first time, and you'd go, my gosh, what's that? You know. And now everybody has them. Same thing with drones. You, the first time I saw a drone, or whatever it's called, we'll talk about that in a minute, I said, good Lord, what's that? Uh, I have to have one. <laughs> what is the difference between a drone and uh, what this is? Well, if you go by Webster's, a drone is an autonomous vehicle. Uh, it doesn't have a pilot. Uh, this is a quadcopter uh, because it has four rotors. And they're also called multi-rotor copters because there are ones that have five rotors, six rotors, up to eight rotors on them. Um, and there are some that are drones, meaning there are some of these that don't require somebody to be flying it at all. But there's also airplanes that are drones that don't require a pilot. So, again, the term drone really means an airplane with no pilot uh, versus these, which the majority that you buy at a local hobby store are quadcopters or multi-rotor copters because you are flying it the whole time. When did these... Uh uh, quadcopters uh, come into being, do you think? Uh, they, they hit the mainstream public about two, two and a half years ago. Uh, as when they got to a price point and a technology point where it was, you know, usable for people. Uh, it was a couple of years before that that they were still being developed, but they had to be built by hand, programmed by hand, and you know, a lot of people didn't have the skill to work with them at the time. And, and you know, I, I found in flying this quadcopter around the Jersey Bay Shore that people are fascinated with it, but people also have an inherent fear <laughs> and tend to want to shoot them down because they think they're invasive. What are some of the things that you've noticed that people have done with their quadcopters? Uh, well, as far as the, the fear factor, let me speak to that for sure. a moment. Uh, a quadcopter doesn't have a real one out there, so it's a very different looking thing to us. What it can do is no different than what a model airplane can do or a model helicopter can do. They're just a more familiar thing to our eyes and our brains, so we're not afraid of them when we see them. Uh, this is just different, and the reason that these are taking over is they're way more stable of a design uh, and easier to fly than a helicopter or uh, airplane. And, and radio-controlled or RC models have been around much longer than these, right? right? since the 50s uh, yeah. is when they started, and everybody's always enjoyed them and loved them. And, and I remember I had an RC plane. The first plane I took up, I could not fly it at all. This thing is relatively easy out of the box to get up in the air, isn't right. it? We always find it amazing that in the real world they invented helicopters before quadcopters because the technology is actually very, very simple to it. Uh, and we believe very shortly you will see real full-size ones flying uh, that may take over for, from the helicopter, very similar to the Osprey uh, airplane helicopter. Sure, sure. So this is what I use. This is the this is the the quadcopter I've been using to shoot a lot of the aerial footage. It has a it has a screen. Uh, so you can actually see what the camera is seeing. Uh, some of the other models use your, uh, your cell phone and an app that allows you to see through the camera on your phone. But this is wonderful. And you can make it go up and down and turn to the left, turn to the right, go forward, go back, go sideways. Uh, it's got a device that if you click the switch, it'll automatically come home and land virtually within inches of where it took off sometimes. Right. The, the GPS systems that they've integrated into them have made them very advanced for both the, the return to home features uh, and for the stability in the air. When you have a quadcopter or a helicopter with GPS, uh, it can really lock it into place for some fabulous video shooting. Uh, it's, it's just second to none when you have that extra feature. Plus, it's a, a safety feature to make sure you get your investment back to ground. And there's a little micro card, uh, a memory card, that slides into the camera. 
Uh, it's good for, it well, it depends on the memory card, about 20 minutes, but how long uh, with this battery, and I love this battery because it's modular, it goes in and out, uh, how long will this stay up in the air? Uh, this one can uh, hover uh, for about 30 minutes of flight time. Wow. Uh, and then again, like you said, just switch out the battery just like on a regular power tool. Uh, and as far as the memory cards, you can get easily over two hours recording on a card. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there, there's a lot of great uses for these, uh, whether it's, you know, for play purposes or you have, you know, other uses that you want for a quad. This one really knocks it out of the park. Now, this is the quad itself, and a quad can be flown without a camera. But a lot of people like to fly them with the camera, unless they're crashing into each other or racing or doing some daredevil sport with them. The camera is very important, and, and the gimbal is even more important to the camera's operation. What in the world is a gimbal? Okay, uh, yeah, that's a good question. A lot of people don't recognize when they see the price of a quad, and then they see the price of the quad with the camera. Uh, what you're paying for is a gimbal system on most of them. Um, the early quads you just you attach your GoPro to, uh, and a GoPro isn't really good for long-distance shooting. So it's great because it's a cheap way to get your a video, uh, but the more advanced ones nowadays, the cameras are designed to go further. And the gimbal systems, even though the quads are extremely stable, if I could demonstrate sure. here, the gimbal system is going to keep this camera stable Look at that. no matter what I do. This is what's called a three-axis gimbal. Uh, it will continually, no matter what happens with the quad, and in reality, in the sky, this quad would never move this much. Sure. Uh, and then from the remote, we can control the tilt up and down on the camera also. Uh, but the stabilization symbol system is really just what makes this an incredible uh, aerial photography piece. And then again, you can remove the camera because there's other uses for quads other than just photography. Well, this is my fourth uh, uh, quadcopter. <laughs> I had a couple of them crash, uh, one in the yard of a Fox News producer. and uh, But uh, that was my fault. Because you have to calibrate these things uh, if you move around too much. You don't have to do it every time. But if you move to a new location or a, a different location, you have to calibrate. And this won't take off unless it connects with at least five GPS satellites. Is that right? Right. This, uh, this particular model uses not only GPS systems, but the GONAS systems. Uh, and you can shut the GPS off if you're flying indoors also. Uh, we have people using them in large warehouses uh, that the, the GPS they don't want. But yeah, this model uh, will fly with that GPS system and it'll tell you how many satellites it's actually connected wow. to uh, and let you know if it loses the satellites for any reason. Uh, very advanced at their... And, and it's, all, it's all right here on the screen. All the, it'll tell you the, the speed, it'll tell you the rate, it'll tell you how high you are. And according to the FAA, uh, you probably shouldn't go above 400 feet. But some of these will go up a little further than that, if you are so daring. Um, what everybody's interested in these now, this has become a, a, a phenomenon like cell phones. Everybody has to have one. Um, what should someone look for when buying a drone? Because I get that question all the time. And I say, well, it depends on what you need it for. It also depends on what your budget is. Uh, what is the price range and what are some guidelines that you should look for? Sure. Um, well, the first thing you want to look for is can you get support for your quadcopter? Mm. Um, they're, the Chinese are pumping these things out. Uh, if you ever got a toy helicopter at the mall and flew it and broke it and then realized you couldn't get a part, that same phenomenon is happening with the quadcopters. So you do want to make sure you get support and usually that means going to a local hobby store because generally, if they carry it, they have to support it because they don't want you to return and it. And you, you have fixed a couple of mine, Alan, so uh, I appreciate that. And yeah. Connor, mm -hmm. your, your tech that works on them, has uh, just done a marvelous job and knows his stuff. Yes. So uh, tell us more. Um, so the support is a definitely a major factor. The price range on them, uh, our cheapest ones that will carry start around $40. Uh, and that's for little micro ones. Yeah, uh, let's take a look at that. And uh, We'll move this over here for now. This little tiny micro quadcopter. Look at this. It's got little lights on it. Uh, this is a great little guy to fly around <laughs> in the office if you want to annoy people with, uh, chase a cat with. Uh, it's just a blast of fun. For 40 bucks. You, you can't go wrong. It plugs into a USB. Um, they're fun. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different uses for quads. Some quadcopters are aerial platforms sure. for photography. There's some that are just for flying sport fun. Uh, we have quadcopters. There are quadcopters out there that are 
uh, for doing flips and acrobatics with. So when you're saying what do you want in a quad, that's one of the things you want to know is what are you going to do with the quad? Indoor, outdoor, stunts, flips, photography, work use, fun use, uh, and that's where your local hobby store will help guide you to uh, the right quad cop. And I, and I think it's important, too, that if you go to a hobby shop uh, wherever you live, that uh, make sure that they allow you to, to try it out. I mean, a lot of hobby shops won't. You, you look at the box and that's it. But a lot of the stuff you've got is out. And you can try it and, and or at least have it demonstrated for you so people can see it, right? Yeah, it, having it demo, demonstrated, you can't tell by looking at it how good the uh, system on it is for uh, the gyros and the electronics. Uh, so when you see it fly, you'll get to see, is it really stable? Can you make it hover, put the controller down, and have it just sit there, or is it going to take off on you? Uh, that, that's one of the keys to good electronics is having that gyro system. And, and this thing now says, welcome pilot, which means it's linked up, and it could be started, correct? Uh, yeah, this is actually ready to fly, even though we're indoors. Uh, we're so I'm going to start the engine, all right? I'm not going to lift it, lift it off or anything, okay? Okay. And, and just uh, be careful, because yep. I, I can be dangerous here. Here we go. Just push this button. Listen to that. Oh, my God. And then you push the button again, <laughs> it, it turns off. There's a switch to take still pictures. There's a switch to take video pictures, and you can turn those on and off. You can, as he, Alan said, you can pan down and pan up. And there's a, a turtle and a, and a hare here. Is that, is that the speed of the drone? Or is exactly. That's going to adjust how aggressive it is when you want that extra stability and slow movements to the camera you can turn the quad down so it's not as aggressive moving. So uh, generally speaking across the nation, to, to get this set up, uh, the, the Blade Chroma it's called? Right, this is the Blade Chroma. This is the newest and hottest model out there uh, for aerial photography, for amateur use, and uh, a lot of people using it for small business use. What's the general price range on something like this in, in the hobby shops around the country? With the camera system and the, uh, the gimbal system, uh, they started around eleven hundred dollars, uh, and the price range varies a little depending on if you want a 1080p camera, a 4K camera, uh, or it can actually be cheaper if you do want to hook your GoPro up to it. They still give you that option. What I also like about this one is that this camera is so stable up in the air. I showed some of the shots, early shots that I took to my parents, and they said, "Are you on top of a building?" because the shots were so steady and it was somewhat windy. So the camera is very important. Now, uh, you also repair these as, mm -hmm. as some hobby shops do around the country. Uh, what typically are these brought in to repair? Is it the result of a crash usually? <laughs> yeah, uh, because they are fun to fly, people put them into the sport mode uh, and sometimes they get a little too aggressive in them. It is extremely rare to see a crash that is the fault of the electronics or the quadcopter. Uh, it's almost always something that somebody comes in and says, hey, I was horsing around with it and, you know, flew it into a tree or brought it in too aggressively towards the ground. Um, so typically what we see on it, actually almost always what we've seen, uh, is they break the body on it or the landing skids. Uh, the electronics on it are extremely hard to break on it. And um, once in a while a propeller will, will crack or snap a right. little bit, and they're, they're not too difficult to replace yourself. Right. right, we haven't had a repair on one of these that's hit $100 yet. Uh, they, they're just fabulously well built, and again, designed to be able to be repaired should you have an incident. Now, you, you're, you're well read on this subject, you, you, you have to be, I suppose. Um, where is this going? There's a lot of features and a lot of things I'd still like to see on a drone. Where do you see this particular hobby or this particular technology going? Well, it's, uh, it's going better and better. Uh, it's got to take a lot more familiarity with the public. Uh, the press, it treats them very rough uh, as they do everything else out there. They love to push the bad stories that people do with them. But like any other tool, just like an axe, you can use it to cut down a tree. You could use it to kill somebody. Uh, the quadcopters tend to get a bad rep, and you don't hear about all the life-saving techniques there are with these quadcopters. It's probably one of the most inexpensive ways to save a life uh, as tools cost. It's less money than a defibrillator and can save lives just as well. So how, how would a first aid squad or a police department use something like this? Uh, well, they're already in use in some of the more progressive police, fire, and first aid squads. Um, 
some of the most popular ways uh, they can easily carry a uh, life preserver or a, uh, a uh, lifeguard's bullet uh, out to a drowning person and drop it to them way quicker than somebody could swim out to a, a drowning person. Uh, you'll still need somebody to go save them, but at least they're floating in the meantime. Uh, they're used in fire departments for aerial photography. The fire chief can get, be getting a, a helicopter view of a fire scene mm. uh, without having a helicopter and without even needing a skilled pilot. This thing can be set up over the fire and sit there and hover by itself with no pilot for 30 minutes and then land when it gets a low battery. Uh, police departments can use them very easily uh, to look for suspects that could be hiding in a swamp area. Uh, mm. it just, it'll go up, look down, and you don't have to wait for the county helicopter Amazing. to show up. What are you reading about the next technology for these kinds of things? The, the next technologies, and we see them on the more expensive uh, models. Um, the, some of the things that are out there are uh, proximity sensors, uh, which will help the quadcopter never to hit anything. You can put sensors around the more advanced <laughs> ones. Uh, that even if you're telling it to fly into a tree, it will stop. The technology just gets keeps getting safer and safer with them as far as returning to home. Uh, and then we'll see what the FAA puts in place and rules for them. Um, you know, and they'll, that'll get regulated at some point uh, because at some point there, there are stupid people out there that they will probably put regulations on the quads to help prevent them from mm. doing bad things. Well, spe speaking of which, uh, you can't fly these things in any of the Monmouth County Park System parks. You can't fly it in any of the state or national parks like Sandy Hook, or you can't fly it near any airports or any other place where it says you can't fly them. I have to tell you, I, was, I, was, I had the drone or the quadcopter up the other day uh, in uh, Port Monmouth, which is near Naval Weapons Station Earl, and I saw something coming over to where I was, and it was black and big, and it looked like a blimp. And and they may be using helium to, so they could stay up longer, but they probably have quadcopter propellers or something. And it just hovered over me, and so I got down really quickly because I thought it was from Naval Weapons Station Earl. Are there blimp-like? Uh, drones that go up so they'll stay up longer with the helium? Do you know about those? Uh, officially, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, show me what else you have. Th this will put this one away. Uh, th this, is a, this is a great, I highly recommend this. Uh, I'm not endorsing products here, but this is, um, show, us how, show us what else you have. Sure. Uh, some of the other quadcopters, again, we talked about the uh, little one just to fly around with. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Look at this. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. I have one of these. Uh, one of our other popular models, uh, this little guy is an indoor-outdoor quad that has a built-in camera on no. it as well. Well, now, now we got. I, I must say, this one does not have a camera, but it can annoy people very effectively, right? Because yes. it's like a gnat. You just want to swat it away. Right? Exactly. And this has a camera. Th this has a built-in camera on it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's Again, as you get bigger, you get easier to fly. Yes. Uh, and this is at the first size level. That's really easy. Um, and we'll just be a blast to fly uh one of the nice things i think most of our quads now have is a removable battery yes. uh which means you can have multiple batteries have one charging while one's flying uh, again repairable parts uh but this is the smallest quad that we have that's a good quality cup quad that also has a camera built into and it. And is there a microchip a card rather for the video or right this uses is it video a micro, or stills or? this is uh videos or stills it'll take both uh and this also has a um uh, a micro SD card that mm -hmm. is removable uh, for your recordings uh, and we do have a similar model to it that flies what we call first person view which means it streams to a screen so you can watch the flight live. It, it looks like a bug and, and, and what, is, what is the price range on something like that? That's about $80 for that model. I have to have it. <laughs> <laughs> and how high would something like this go? Would this go 400 feet or no? You know the height on these little ones yeah, yeah. is really limited to how far you can see it. It's oh. your eyeball capability. Now one thing, one thing we mentioned but I want to mention again is the nice thing about uh, some of these drones like the first one or uh, quadcopters that we had here was that if the battery runs low or they get out of range, they have the good sense to sort of automatically come home or at least warn you that they're running out of battery and they will land. Right, and that's on the bigger ones. On the $80, not on you don't, you're not getting that technology. So if you um, accidentally, this goes out of sight, and you've accidentally flown it over your, over your house and over your fence. You come in and spend another $80. Yeah, I, I tell you, <laughs> I, have, I have searched for hours for drones that I have lost, or quadcopters, I keep, they call them drones, um, 
and and having one that that comes back automatically is a huge benefit. What else do you have, Alan? This is amazing. Sure. Uh, one of the other popular ones. This is uh, the internet calls this the most durable quadcopter there is. This wow. is called the Ominous. Uh, this is a great model for just doing stunts with. No camera to it. It's kept mm -hmm. lightweight. It's got a cool, aggressive look to it. Uh, and, and this thing takes a beating. Uh, and it's just fun to fly. It can uh, angle real hard when you turn wow. it. Uh, and it's just a lot of fun. And again, you're under a hundred dollar price point. Uh, they're a blast. Uh, it's just this is this is what we call stunt flying kind of quad. So you know, I used to uh, I used to I still play guitar, and I'm a musician. And uh, I remember people used to ask me, "What kind of guitar should I get?" And I always said, "Well, if you're not sure whether you're going to stick with it." Uh, buy one that isn't too expensive because then you haven't wasted a lot of money and you know what to get a good to get a pretty good quad that quadcopter that also takes pretty good pictures what's the minimum that you might have to spend for something like that well you, you could just start with the $80 model to take uh, basic pictures mm -hmm. uh, but we do have more advanced ones uh, this little guy here another indoor outdoor size quad uh, but this has a much more advanced stability system, and this is where I say you have to go to a local hobby store because you can't tell looking online at this model or this model right. which one is more stable. True, true. Uh, but this has a way more advanced stability system into it. Uh, it actually can flip over also. Oh, my God. Uh, but it's uh, it's really designed as a good, easy-flying aerial platform and still starting around the $150, $180 model price, I believe. I could be off on that. And these propellers are start upside down, but you can flip it the other way and it'll still fly. Right. They make the same model without the camera. Uh, and it, they, they both kind of portray it well, where it can land this way, it can land this way. Um, normally, when a quadcopter flips over, it's now thrusting upside down. Right. These little guys, they know. as soon as you flip over, the motors instantly switch directions. <laughs> uh, so it's a lot of fun to have, and again, for the stunt flying fun, wow. uh, that it's just a great little way to that go. That is amazing. Okay, we're starting to get a little bigger here we're now, so I'm going to move some of these little ones over. What else sure. you got? Well, there's a new fad in quadcopters uh, that's gotten real popular a lot in France and in Europe, and it's called quad racing. Uh, and really? boy, these are a lot of fun. And this is a quad racing copter. Uh, you see they look a lot more homemade. Uh, and it's because huh. they strip off all the pretty body stuff to be really lightweight. Uh, the point of these is to go fast. Uh, they zip around obstacle port courses. Usually they fly uh, watching a video camera that's mounted in the front. Huh. Uh, and uh, you fly like you're a pilot. And it's most popular thought of from the uh, Star Wars scene in the woods. Yeah. They're flying the speeders around. It's the same idea. You're flying as if you're the pilot. Uh, it's hairy because crashes do happen, but they're very inexpensive to repair. Uh, and it's a lot of fun way to compete with uh, with your friends. Are, are, are people starting to make their own drones? Is that uh, quad copters and stuff? Yeah, people have been doing that before the kits were available, yeah. the ready-to-flies. Um, but for racing right now, racing quads are, for the most part, built by people. Uh, and... Mm. Uh, it takes a certain tech head to do a job like that. That's amazing. And they, there, there are races. There are competitions around the country now with these things, right? They and are, these and bigger ones. They're, they're few and far between right now, but it is a rapidly growing, uh, you know, type of racing that it's just a lot of fun and inexpensive to get into and stay into. You know, it would be interesting to also not only have uh, races but have precision maneuvering because, you know, you can be up four or five hundred feet. And I've done it where I've tried to kind of swoop down and go into an open door or go through a tunnel. And uh, it takes a little practice. So before you go too high and too far, you want to practice maneuvering as much as you can before before you're in an area where you could do some damage. Sure, absolutely. And for the ultimate in stunt work, this is one of our favorite for stunt flying. Uh, this model is actually the previous version of the big chroma oh, yeah, uh, that yeah. I was showing you before. Uh, th but what was great about this one is this one is a lighter weight model. Uh, it can carry a camera, but it is a fabulous stunt quad. It has different levels of sport flying, depending on how much stability you need in the beginning versus to how advanced you are. It can do flips. Uh, it can fly up to 60 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour? Yes, My and you, know, you have to keep in mind a 60 mile an hour impact with the ground <laughs> can be a, a terrifying yeah, experience yeah, for yeah. it. Uh, but it does have the GPS system on it. Uh, they're just a lot of fun to fly. 
Now this is terrific. And, and what's the price uh, generally on something like this? Uh, these ones start around four hundred dollars. It's about the least expenses you'll get into a GPS uh, quadcopter for, uh, and it does come with a GoPro mount with it also. Oh, okay. All right. Well, this is all right. So I, I'm. What else? You look at all these things you've got here. Sure. Uh, I've got one other model uh, that we wanted to show people. Uh, this is what you tend to see more on oh a commercial God. flying level that, like, a television production oh company would use. Oh, my God, look at this. Uh, Let's move it a little bit closer to us and get in the camera. Sure. How about something like this? Go ahead. I won't touch you. Quadcopters like these, and these are when you'll start to see them add even more motors oh to my, them. Oh, and it's heavy. It's a, yeah, big units. What these uh, are designed for is really long flight times, uh, carrying much bigger, more advanced camera systems uh, that... Right now, we have a lot of debate in uh, Congress about the legality, the permitting, the licensing. Uh, but this is the style of copter uh, oh, that gosh. they use for them. Again, more industrial use. They're a couple thousand dollars to get them flying. It, it's a it's a joy, really, to to be in your shop. Uh, there's uh, so many things here for men, women, boys, and girls. Uh, there are models out the yin yang, and. Uh, all kinds of crafts, and I never did understand Dungeons and Dragons. Have you ever done that? Uh, yeah, I played when I was a kid. I dabbled in it did a you? little. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun. It's a, you know a game that involves your mind uh, and your imagination uh, versus waiting for a computer to tell you what you should do. Well, thanks, <laughs> thanks so much for explaining all this to <laughs> us, and and I hope that. Um, you, if you are considering buying a quadcopter or a drone, uh, that you'll uh, heed the advice of Alan and um, come to a hobby shop and take a look at them. Uh, it's one thing to order something offline. I did it myself. I ordered uh, a, uh, a drone online and, and got it home and thought it was wonderful. <laughs> uh, and then I realized there were things that were more wonderful. So uh, be careful. That's all the time we have for Jersey Bay Shore. As always, I appreciate you watching. Next week, a brand new episode. And as always, if you see me on the street, in the country, or out on a boat, or up in a drone somewhere, please do wave and say hi. I'm John Schneider. Have a good one. Bye-bye.